come to London. Engineers have built a new rail tunnel. It will connect the city east to west. But building it will be like threading a needle through a rat's nest of existing tube tunnels, sewers and deep foundations. Back when the original London underground tunnels were dug, men and machines used tape measures and maps to plan the routes. Crossrail's tunnels under London are long, so long that when they were being planned, they were affected by something you might not expect. The curvature of the earth. Knowing how the curvature of the earth is going to affect your new tunnels is quite important. Otherwise, the tunnels don't line up when they meet. Worse, in some of the really tight spaces between older tunnels, you can end up drilling right into them. That would be embarrassing. When the current crossrail scheme was developed in the 1990s, the planners used maps based on the Ordnance Survey National Grid System. But this turned out to be too crude a measure for the accuracy they needed. Had they used the normal street maps, then crossrail tunnels would have seen deviations of up to 20 centimeters per kilometer of tunnel due to the curvature of the earth. Maybe not a large issue in some places, but that could have been catastrophic in central London as the crossrail tunnels squeeze between gaps in other tube lines, sewers, and modern foundations. For example, Tottenham Court Road had a gap so tight that had they not adjusted for the curvature of the earth, the tunnel boring machine that left Paddington would have been sufficiently out of place by the time it arrived that the cutting head might have drilled right through the Northern Line tube tunnel. <laughs> 